You know, we always talk about it, but maybe, just maybe, this upcoming election, global warming, actually will be an issue that will matter at the battle ballot box. Easy for me to say. Now, even though it's not one of the top issues on most people's minds, nearly 80% of the public polled says the government should do more to fight climate change. And it is the government's job to do that. That, of course, sounds like good news for Democrats. Now, I want to bring in our panel right now, Jeannie Zeno, professor of political science at Iona College and also professor of campaign management at NYU. Good-looking guy to her side, Dominic oh, Carter, boy. political journalist and author. Amazing. Oh, I have a phone to pick with you from Friday. <laughs> and Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. All right, Jeannie, uh, you're the only one who understands really polls and how they work here. It ranks as like seventh or eighth in terms of the important issues to the public, but when asked more specifically just about it, um, should we do something about it and whose job it is, overwhelmingly, I mean, four to five Americans agree on next to nothing here, but they agree the government ought to do something about it. Is getting involved in this, in Democrats, traditionally the party, to say that it's the government's job to do it and it's going to have some pain along the way, is that a winning political issue or it sounds good in a poll, but you better stay away from it like the third rail? No, I think it is a winning political issue. And, you know, if you think back to 2000, many people say one of Al Gore's big mistakes was that he didn't talk enough about his work on the environment because it is something. And, you know, even people like Dick Morris came out later and said it is something that most people agree with. And I'll tell you something else, which you know from your kids. It's also a generational issue. It's hard to find young people today who don't think that the government has a role in this and there's a lot of work to be done because they are taught this from the time they're in pre-K and kindergarten. Oh, I, told, and I told these guys this morning that if you throw something plastic in the trash and you're around your kids, they and I don't care if it. they go to public, <laughs> parochial, or private, they curse you a blue streak. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, it's, a, like, it's the offense. And it's funny, I'm in the middle, like uh, my parents' generation, you know, yeah. unless you get in trouble with the town, they don't think of it that way. <laughs> you are kind of on board with it. your kids are like yeah, you know, it's, I, a, it's, it's huge for young people, yeah. whether they are consider themselves conservative or liberal. So for that reason, as demographics change, it is a real winning issue. And you're right, it's not, you know, jobs, it's not, you know, education at the, you know, the top two or three, but it's something that people take into consideration. And so it is something that really does work to the Democrats' favor. And the Republicans, if they could find a way to speak to these issues. But you also have to dig into those numbers because, yes, there seems to be wide consensus on the fact that climate change is a concern and that something needs to be done about it. But then when you start digging into the numbers as to what should be done about it, you start getting diversion splits. Okay, and, but and here's, as with everything, how do you market it, okay? So if you're going to try and make this a winning issue, and Hillary already mentioned she liked the speech or whatever else, how do you do it? Do you do it by saying, let's see who even believes in global warming. Let's ask these guys if there are even such a thing as dinosaurs by pointing the difference. Or do you say, if you don't do it, you scare the bejesus out of them and say it's going to be 120 degrees is the normal high in July across the Midwest in 40 years. Uh, what's the tactic that will actually get people to say, I'm with her or I I'm think with him? You have to scare people to a certain degree, but you also have to take away their fear in other areas. The counterpoint to doing something, the federal government doing something about climate change, is that it will serve as a tax on business. It will depress jobs. It will hurt the economy. And in a time when everybody's very sensitive about the economy and, and especially their own jobs, that doesn't play well. So you have to figure out how to make that into a positive alternative for people going forward. That it's not just, it, not only will it not put your jobs or the economy at risk, but it can actually be a boon and with new technologies and, and you know, with a system that actually turns this into an economic incentive for, for taking care of these problems. So you have to A, scare people that something needs to be done, but then B, arrest any concerns that they have that somehow you're going to crater the entire economy by taking a step. But the problem is that it's already a polarizing issue. It's amazing, how, Richard, how just watch on any given issue, Obama will come out and announce A. Within five minutes, you have 10 Republican candidates claiming Z. And so the partisan divide on the issue of climate change, global warming, I thought Obama did a good job of selling it. I'm not so hot on, but I guess he has no choice. I'm not so hot on his constant use of executive orders. Uh, he's not joking anymore. You know, he's what else like, can he do? Right, yeah. he's like, I'm going at, I'm going at this all alone. And I don't care who's with me and whatever. But it's, it's going to lead to further, I mean, you have candidates that are now urging some governors to ignore what the president, what the federal government Absolutely. is urging on this. So it's I, I, But here's tough. the thing. I think for the first time, at least in recent memory, 
Sure, there's a wing that says, oh, global warming, it's a hoax. But it's a small little sliver. I mean, in the scientific population, it's less than 1% that'll actually go on record saying something like that. I think you're unelectable if you say any more, you know, there is no such a thing with it. It just makes you look like you're not self-aware. You go out west, I don't care, right, left, you know, purple party you belong to, they're running out of water. Right? Somebody's got to, you're not going to solve the problem by doing what the president said today, but to pretend it doesn't exist, I think it's a tough sell out there. Now, selling the pain is part of the process. I think really solar panels and wind turbines are only going to do so much. There will be pain in the coal industry. There will be pain in other, you know, energy industries here. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think you have to be that afraid to say what everybody thinks now. Yeah, and, and you know, I think in the fall, we're going to see the Pope come and speak before Congress. Great and point. The Pope spoke about this, and Mayor de Blasio, among many other American leaders and others, were there when he talked about this and went to this, you know, uh, this coalition president that he had. The president referenced the Pope today, And yeah. the president referenced it. You know, I don't know if the Pope is going to talk about this specific issue. We have no idea. But, you know, you're hard pressed to find somebody, left, right, or center, who can look at the scientific evidence and not agree that this is a problem that has to be combated. Oh, now, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Andrew, I, I'm, Andrew, I'm sorry. No, the, the Republican Andrew's chairman of the Senate Environment Committee brought a snowball onto the floor of the Senate because climate change doesn't exist. But, but, the, the leader of the House Republicans on that same committee, he says that climate change can't be a problem because only God can destroy Andrew, the Earth. I was just about to say you're right about something when you interrupted me. I'm sorry. No, no <laughs> you're all right about that. But, but I think Andrew is right that there is a way that it has to be couched. But you look at moral authorities like the Pope coming and making that case. And I'm telling you, it is increasingly tough. It is like gay marriage. It is increasingly tough to argue against it. To Dominic's point in the Republican primary and Andrew's point, it may be a winning sale there in some Republican primaries or caucuses, but when you get into a general election, it's a hard case yep. to make if it's on the forefront of people's minds, which again is another if. It'd be, it'd be fascinating. We're gonna talk a little bit about <laughs> politics. You're amazing, if we'll, Andrew. If we'll see a commercial in the next year and a half um, on this subject. If a, if a candidate will put their arms around this as an issue. When we come back, speaking of campaigns, from vice president to a run for president, that's right, Dominic, it's looking more and more likely that Joe Biden could jump into the presidential race, and that would cause more than a little bit of a headache here for the White House.